Hi there. In this video, we'll take a look at creating customers as well as modifying them, um, modifying price levels, and then applying price levels to customers. So I'm at the home screen. Again, you can get here by clicking on home. And then I'm going to choose customers. And I'll create a new customer by clicking new customer and job and new customer. And again, if you add the customer, just like on the payable side, if you add the customer down here in the company name, it populates the company name as well as the customer name. So I'm going to add Seton Street Band. And I'll hit tab, and it pops in. Uh, they don't have an opening balance, but if they did, a transaction would be created on March 1st, 2016. It is 2020, by the way, um, but this data is back in 2016. Um, and I'm going to go to the payment settings. Uh, if you would capture, of course, all of their contact information as well. But I'm just going to pop over the payment settings, and I'm going to give them a credit limit of $1,000. So the system will warn you once uh, a customer exceeds their credit limit. And I'm going to give them terms, so if they pay within... 10 days I get a 1% discount and on the sales tax settings they're going to be standard taxes which is GST and PST again I'm in British Columbia Canada and I'm not going to add anything else there all that's required by the way is uh, the name customer name company name um, I just added the rest of the stuff because it affects the bottom line I'll choose OK and I've created a customer. Uh, to modify a customer, you simply double click. Um, I'm going to modify HG Palmer here. So I can double click on them or click once and use my little pencil. And I'm going to give them a credit limit of $5,000. So I've got payment settings and credit limit. And you see that they have a price level of educational. So we've got a couple of price levels already added to this data set. Um, in a future video, I'll show you how to create those as well. It's pretty straightforward, though. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly modify those so they reduce prices any customers with this price level, level have. And, uh, and then I'm going to apply them to a couple of customers. So I'll choose OK. You find price levels under lists, and it's price level list. So we've got a couple in this data set already. I'm just going to double click on this. And I'm going to reduce their price by 5%. So if you type in a plain number, it's a dollar value. If it's a percent, of course, it's a percent. I'm going to round to the nearest penny. And OK. And I'll do the same thing with educational. <coughs> Decrease by 10% this time. So again, 10 and round to the nearest penny. Okay, now I'm going to apply these price levels to uh, some uh, orchestras for commercial and some schools for educational, of course. So I'm done with this list. I'll just close it. And I'm going to, going to apply it. I'll apply um, commercial to Kelowna. So I'll just double click on Kelowna there. Payment settings. I'll give them the commercial price. And okay, and I'll give. Uh, Prince George the educational price so what this means is the prices that we've added to our inventory items or our service items will be of course affected by whatever we entered in that price list price level I should say uh, let's go ahead and add uh, a sales receipt while we're at it we've only we're only at four minutes for this video so far so I'll make it and even 10. Um, so I'm going to close my customer center and I'm going to choose receipts. So receipts are for cash on delivery sales. That is the customer pays at the time of purchase. So we've got a brand new guy here. So I'll type in Joe Novak. He's our new customer. When I hit tab, notice that it's not on the list. Ask me what I want to do with them. I'm just going to do a quick add. So that's another way to add a customer, of course. And he's buying um, everything to do with trombones, case, stand, and the actual trombone 
itself. So B110, A case for the trombone, and a stand for the trombone. And notice, if you click on your rate here, now that I've added those levels, you see that we have the option of giving him a commercial or educational price as well. And you see how the commercial and educational prices have affected that receipt. And uh, what else do we need? Uh, let's add a customer message. So these are also found in lists. I'll thank him for his business. And I can go ahead and, oh, I'm going to say payment month check and put in a check number as well, which is 104. Uh, don't forget to change your date like I almost did, 15-3-16. Again, my workstation is day, month, year, and I'll go ahead and save and close. So again, receipts for COD sales. That is, the customer pays at the time of purchase. Let's quickly look at an order. So if you choose order here, and this will be for HG Palmer. And I'll make this a uh, happen on March 15th as well. Good. And they are getting a couple of 115s. W115s, that is. Two saxophones. W for wind. And I will thank them for their business. And let's quickly take a look at an invoice. So I'm going to save and close. So an invoice, uh, again, affects accounts receivable. So I'll create an invoice. And this is for Pit Meadows. And this is on March 16th. And this is a service invoice, so we're just selling them lessons. So notice all of the shipping information disappears and the item and quantity gets switched for some reason. I'll pick up uh, lessons. And they take three hours of lessons. And the sales tax is only GST for services in British Columbia, where I'm at. And we'll thank them for their business. And now um, we actually send um, one of our employees over once a week to do these three hours of music instruction. So we're going to store this as a memorized transaction. So I'll choose memorize. So once the once the form has been filled out, then he can memorize. And I'll just add it to the reminders list. Say weekly. And the next date is one week from today, which is the 23rd. Again, the fictional date of this company. I'm actually in the end of 2020 making these videos. So I'll choose OK. So it's memorized. And now I'll go ahead and And I'll go ahead and save and new. Now let's quickly sell a product as well. So I'm just going to change this to a, back to a product invoice. And I'll sell this to Lumby on the 21st. And they're buying a couple of gig bags. Two of them. And a B101, which I believe is a cornet. B for brass. Just one of those. And notice they get the educational price. Oh, sorry. Lumby was supposed to get the educational price, so I forgot to add them but they're a school 
So I'm just going to pick up educational for both of those. And I would go back and modify Lumby so that they get the educational price. And let's thank them for their business, the most important part of the invoice. For repeat business, of course. And I'll go ahead and save and close. Uh, let's quickly look at um, adjusting an invoice as well. So basically, we just find it, find the invoice that we want to adjust and change the invoice. So I'm going to go edit, find, looking for an invoice from District 56. So I'll find, there it is there. And uh, I only sold uh, 10 music stands, sheet music stands. So I just change that to 10, hit tab, and save and close. So you find it, you change it, and you save it. Yes, I want to save those changes. Close my find screen. And let's quickly just receive one payment as well. So I'm going to choose receipt payments. So this, this is different than receipts. Receipts are a sale with a payment at time of, of the sale. This is when we pay an existing invoice. So I'll click on receipt payments. And I received this from Pit Meadows. I'll pay that amount. And uh, you notice there's no discounts. If there are some discounts available, they would have a little flag here letting us know that there's a discount available. And I'll say they paid by check 54321 on the 21st of 2016. And I could go ahead and save and close. Uh, now, if you want to give somebody a refund, you choose refunds and credits, of course. And I'm going to give um, Maple Ridge Marching Band. They returned a C11. C111, that is. So, I'm going to say refund on returned item. Now, when I hit save and close, it asks me what I want to do with this money. So I'm going to apply it to a future invoice. They're not here, and they have no outstanding invoices, so I choose OK. And then when I create an invoice for them, oops, stop for time and expense, it's just a regular old invoice. Maple Ridge Marching Band. And they're buying a uh, they're buying three C one oh fives. Three flute cases. Now to apply that uh, credit they have, you click on Apply Credits. And I say yes, I do want to save it. Ask me what a credit I want to apply, and that's the one. I only have the one, but I would choose a couple or all if there's more than one. And now you see that that amount is applied to the amount that they owe. So I can choose Save and Close. Now, if you need to adjust a payment, we go to receive payments, find the one we need to adjust. So I'm just going to pretend I just need to adjust this one here. Maybe they only paid $110. So what I do is I unapply my payment first. So that basically unchecks that, makes this zero. You could just do that manually as well. And I'm going to just change that to $100. And I'll check that line off. And then I save. And I'll 
I'll say yes. And that's how you adjust that payment. Now I want to quickly record, uh, deposit all of the money that I've received. So um, when you receive payments via receive payments or sales receipts, um, they basically go into a, a place called undeposited funds. And when you record deposit, it takes a look at all of the amounts in the undeposited funds and then you get to choose which bank account you want to put it into. So I click on record deposits. There's my two um, amounts that I received, so I'm just going to select all of them and put them in the bank. So I choose OK. Ask me what bank account. This is, uh, you can add a default under edit preferences checking. And this is on the 28th. And then I just go ahead and save and close. <coughs> now we have a couple of forms available as well. So if I go to, or sorry, reports available, customers and receivables, I'll take a look at customer contact list. Where is it here? There we are, customer contact list. Um, also, we have AR aging detail. So that shows all of the transactions that went to produce these balances that uh, are owed by our customers and then it categorizes them by aging period and this is I want this to be the January of 2016 to oh, sorry the 31st of March 2016 so if I refresh you see it actually becomes current with the date our data exists in so again categorized by or grouped if you prefer by aging period um, customer balance detail so this will just show everything all of the transactions that went to produce their balances and the total amount owed at the bottom here uh, accounts receivable graph I'm going to skip that one I don't like the graphs that uh, QuickBooks produces uh, sales by customer. So if we go to reports sales, we can see sales by customer detail. Sorry, this is off the screen here, but it's the fourth one down. Sales by customer detail. And I'll be specific about my period 1116 to 31316. So you see all the sales that happened in my first quarter there by customer. So you know who your important customers are, who you have to treat nicely, and then you can just ignore these guys. They only buy a few things. That's a joke. You want to treat everyone equally. Um, and finally, sales by item as well. So reports. Sales. Sales by item. I'm going to go with summary. So, again, it's the fifth one down under reports, sales, sales by item summary. And again, I'll be specific about the period. So you see everything that was sold in the first quarter and how well we did, uh, what percentage that item was of total sales, as well as the percentage, the uh, profit we made. All right, well, that's uh, accounts receivable in a nutshell. Again, creating customers, modifying them, uh, price level lists, um, invoices, receipts, checks, um, receiving payments, depositing those payments, as well as our receipts. We looked at sales orders uh, briefly, uh, filling them is exactly like on the uh, vendor side and uh, then we've looked at adjusting payments as well as adjusting invoices thanks so much for watching